in observing Breast Cancer Month. Optometrist and breast cancer survivor Dr. Ebby Shera Jackson will be representing the local cancer society in one of the world's largest marathons in New York next month. Dr. Shera Jackson has been training for the race since February. The veteran marathon runner says despite the odds, she is ready for the competition. The major significance is the fact that my body is slowly healing, and that's important because I had six months of chemotherapy, three major surgeries, eight weeks of radiation, and I completed all of that the end of December. And my body had to detox, and I had to start all over again, basically walking and slowly increasing my miles and endurance. And so I'm just happy to be where I am today, to know that I can at least try and complete a 26.2 mile marathon. Well, the Cancer Society of the Bahamas is supporting Dr. Shara Jackson in her quest. Vice President Dr. Homer Bloomfield talks about the significance of a digital mammogram. As we know, breast cancer is one of the cancers that strike a lot of women in the Bahamas. And we need to be able to service the women of the Bahamas. And one of the things that we need is testing tools. One of the things that we would like to get is a digital mammogram. The Public Hospital Authority has plans to acquire one. Of course, these equipment uh, tend to be expensive, but it's another step in the line of better diagnosing breast cancer. People often wonder what test is best, whether the digital mammogram or the regular diagnostic mammogram. The digital mammogram provides the radiologist with uh, recording the images in a computer and so they can enhance the image, they can turn them around, they can expand them and look at them more closely than the regular mammogram. Well, persons willing to donate can send checks to the Cancer Society of the Bahamas and indicate that the gift is for the purchase of a digital mammogram machine. Well, thousands invaded the Botanical Gardens this afternoon for the much-anticipated 16th Annual International Cultural Festival. The festival features drinks, food and cuisine from virtually every continent on the planet. More than 100 booths from 24 countries are on display this year. Lead Coordinator at the Ministry of Tourism, Janet Johnson, says more than 25,000 people are expected to pass through the Botanical Gardens for this year's fest, which is set to be the biggest and best ever. Cuba won Best in Show for the second time this year, um, which was excellent because uh, they've got a fabulous um, presentation. They brought in a lot, a lot of their artists from uh, Cuba. A number of the booths have really kicked it up a, a, a notch this year, and they put on fabulous presentations. The Bahamas has gone all out, and the booth holders are not, no longer looking at it as a commercial venture. But getting involved and bringing in the cultural heritage of the Bahamas to share with the, with the wider public. Now among the countries showcasing the best of their homeland today and Sunday is Panama, which is new to the fest, courtesy of Copa Airlines. And Sri Lanka is back this year. Of course, there has been lots of talk around the Bahamas about China recently because of that multi-billion dollar Bahamar development. Our news team caught up with the Chinese ambassador's wife at the fest. This is her first time and she loves it. Uh, this is her first time to take a part in such a big festival, and she thinks this is a great success. And all the international uh, activities is very interesting, it's fantastic. Sounds like a lot of fun. Of course, this story was provided by our uh, reporter today, Giovanni Stewart, using his iPad. Well, if you're looking for some of the old Bahamian music, but with a fresh twist, then you should check out Fresh Paint. It's the latest CD by musician Fred Ferguson, who is one of the original Bahamian members. During a launch party last evening at the Hilton Resort, Ferguson said his labor of love, which includes 10 instrumentals, would not have been possible without the support of the ministries of tourism and culture. Funky Nassau, for example, is a given. Everybody knows the popularity of Funky Nassau. 40 years, they're celebrating the 40th anniversary this year. And you see songs like uh, Send Him Home and Bahama Lullaby. These are songs that are very popular generally. So it was a, the, the toughest task, task, like I said, was choosing the 10 songs that, that will make this project. But, you know, there's a fresh paint two or three coming later, so there are the songs that will make it. 
Cultural Minister Charles Maynard said this is a win-win for Ferguson, both locally and internationally, as the film industry is always looking for Bahamian music. This particular project is multi-purpose. Um, it has a touristic side. We expect to sell the actual product online at, on Bahamas.com. We intend to use the product as um, an, an app promotion material and so on. But we also hope to turn on a new generation of Bahamians to some of these classics. And the importance of that is obvious, you know, if we can uh, get our own people to appreciate our culture and where it's, it, it comes from, I think that we'll have more young artists exploring uh, in various directions in terms of uh, really the essence of our music.